What's up everybody, it's Realistic with Realistic Productions and I'm doing another tutorial for SoundOracle.net. We're going to continue on with our fundamental series. Uh, we're pretty much done with the drums at this point, so now we're going to dive into pads. And we're going to talk about some different things that we want to consider to cut with them and some things that we want to consider of what's the fun fundamental frequencies of these pads and what we should be boosting and what we should be focusing on for them so they gel better in the mix. All right, let's dive in. All right, so I got Pro Tools open up here, but as I always say, these tips and tricks will work in any DAW. And if you're capable of it, go ahead and open up your DAW choice and do this along with me. You'll find that you learn a lot more if you're doing this with me versus trying to hold on to it and remember it for later. All right, so what we're going to be doing today is pads. So these are going to be a little bit trickier, so I'm actually going to bounce through a few different sessions here just to show you some things so one of the things though that you have to consider with pads uh more than anything i mean you have to consider this with just about any instrument but with these in particular you got to consider the type of pad that you're dealing with where it came from and then you also got to consider the other instruments in there and what they're doing and so on this particular one because i know for the fundamental series what we've been doing is just been doing a blank session and just throwing in a solo instrument and just kind of showing you there for pads, though, I really got to open up a session and show you some things that are happening in the session as well. So particular, a few things to really focus on with pads is what the bass is doing, what the kick is doing, and what the lead vocal is doing, if there is a lead vocal. So, yeah, let's start out with this. I'll show you what this is. This is a, a song that I produced, recorded, and mixed for a singer named Alexis Christine. And there was just, uh, it had most of the things I was looking for in here, so I'll show you this. You're my love, don't let go of me. This time apart doesn't mean we're left to So I wanted to start out with this because the intro of this song in particular is just kick pad and vocal, and it's really good for the example. Later on, there'll be some more instruments that get thrown in there. But yeah, so we'll start with pad here, and so you could probably guess one of the things you want to do is low cut, right? So we don't actually need all that down there. I mean, you can even barely hear that. And you'll find that for just about every pad because pads are really going to be a culprit when it comes to muddying up a mix. And a lot of it is just low-end stuff that's just useless anyways down there. So we got that. And then we want to pay attention to what the lead vocal is doing. Don't let go of me. So this particular lead vocal has a little bit of a boost around... 5.6k and then there's also some more boost around 10k what you want to do is you want to clear some space for that vocal Don't let go. so if this particular vocal is at 5.6 it's usually a good idea to go find that exact frequency in the pad and then just carve out a little bit of space for that vocal Don't let go. and you can see in this particular pad there's not even much going on in that area and if I I zero it out see it's just a little bit but it can still get in the way of that lead vocal so it's usually kind of good to duck that out and I, I definitely recommend that for synth instruments too and a lot of instruments if you just carve out a little area for the vocal right Don't let go. and then another thing to kind of consider is what what is the kick doing here Right, so this particular kick is pretty heavy. I actually have a parallel track doing some distortion too. We have a pretty big build up at 120, right? And so that might be an area in the pad where you actually want to consider to, to cut that a little bit. And so if we listen to the pad here and we go to 120, so we got a little bit of a build up there, so kind of worth getting rid of that. And then too, it's also usually worth throwing on some type of side chain. I particularly like to do a little bit of multi-band side chaining here with some multi-band compression. 
That way, we're ducking this down a little bit with the kick here. So it just kind of creates a little bit more space. If you don't got too an aggressive and a kick going on, you could probably maybe even use uh, multi-band with the vocal of where that was at like 5.6K to kind of duck that down a little bit too. And so then as far as what to consider to boost and cut when it comes to pads when we're not dealing with what's going on in the instruments, they can sometimes get muddy between 350 and 800. You can already hear when I, you know, I exaggerate that. And by the way, I just boost like that to exaggerate it to really show what those frequencies sound like. And sometimes when you're kind of looking for what to get rid of, it is a good idea to exaggerate it a little bit just so you can hear like, oh, okay, yeah, that's probably where I need to cut it a little bit. So you can hear there's a lot of buildup around uh, 800. So sometimes that's kind of good to be able to cut that a little bit just to kind of clear some more space for the rest of the instruments. And I'll show you in the mix here. Love me this time apart. Without the EQ. So it just creates a little bit more space to it, just a, a little bit more. So let me go ahead and open up a different session with just some random pads in there, and then we can kind of focus on some other areas for different pads. Yeah, but here's just some other examples of what you can do as far as what you want to look for for pads and different styles. So we'll throw some EQs on this. We'll check this one out first. So obviously you want to get rid of some of this lower stuff. This particular one has some harsh stuff going up up top that you might want to get rid of around the 2 to 3K range. Little bit of a build up around 217. See that? So definitely something to kind of consider there. You'll find a lot of times that the buildup for pads are going to be between like 120 to 250. Usually too, I'd say like you want to start from 120 to 140 and then again look for another buildup around 180 to 250. And then just sometimes you don't need to because this is where you'll kind of have the mid-range lay. But sometimes pads will have a little bit of muddiness so you might want to check that out. This particular one, there's not really a lot of muddiness. I would leave that one alone. Let's go ahead and try to see if we can find some of that buildup down here a little bit. Now, if you're looking to boost, their pads are a little tricky when it comes to boosting. There's usually not a lot of places where it's going to need boosting, especially with a lot of nicer software since a lot of times they've done a pretty good job of boosting the stuff. It's just areas that you need to clean up, especially when you start hearing what else is in the mix. Maybe the most that you might want to do is just add a little bit of air up top around 10K above. This particular one, 8K is where the air started. Yeah, we'll just kind of go through a few more pads here. You can already hear where that buildup is. It's right over here. So yeah, run 144. Let me loop that right when it starts. So definitely an area worth cutting there. I mean, you can hear that. It one's super obvious. And then it looks like it's building up a little bit too around 230, 210 to 230. 223 really building up. 
And then let's kind of see what the mid range is. Definitely got some muddiness around 500. A little bit of harshness up here. About 4K. We're kind of cutting there. And again, if you're looking for some of that air, we're going to find that up here. I'll show you another example of a different one. Yeah, like I said, pads are tricky just because there's going to be so many different styles and different types of wave forms that are being used for it. If you have to deal with something like this, might need to have some form of uh, multi-band on there just to kind of ease that up a little bit. Just to kind of stop that one from getting so aggressive. And then there's probably some information down here. Yeah, about 146, I'm hearing it. Zeroed out, that's what that sounds like. Just kind of duck that out a little bit. And then I got one last one here to show you. It's kind of a little bit more of a, a washy, warmer sounding pad. Again, we don't need that down there. Just bad build up that muddies up the mix. And you could hear too that this one gets a, a little bit muddy and washy in this area. If I zero it out, that's what we're hearing. And then when I go back in, try to listen to what this sounds like now that it's that it's in your ears, that that's what it sounds like. And it's usually worth checking down here, too. Yeah, a little build, build up there around 157, 160. Really kind of has a, a resonating feel. I'll show you that. So kind of worth getting rid of that. So this particular one has quite a bit of washiness around 900, but I feel like that's on purpose. So I would actually kind of leave that alone. So try to use your discretion when you're dealing with pads to figure out what's on purpose for some of this stuff. And then the last thing for something like this, you'll see there's just mostly mid range. You could probably get rid of this top end. See, I'm not really changing it. I'll show you what that sounds like. Kind of getting rid of some of that distanceness, and it, it might actually kind of help too if there's vocals and stuff in there. Kind of clear some more room for that. So yeah, that's some frequencies to consider when boosting and cutting pads. Hopefully this helped out, and hopefully you're able to. So I'm hoping that you got a lot out of this tutorial today. Hopefully there's some information that was useful. If you're getting a lot out of this, but you want to see more, please feel free to comment below. Let us know what kind of tutorials that you want to see in the future. And Oracle and I can definitely make that happen. We're always trying to find the content that you want to see. If you're liking what you're hearing from me, you can find me everywhere on social media at Realistic Productions. You can find me at the web, realisticproductions.net. You can find my man Sound Oracle everywhere at Sound Oracle. And if you're looking for the best 808s, the best kicks, the best snares with the craziest loops and samples you can find on the internet right now, go to soundoracle.net. All right, till next time.